so excited to be here with Melissa Kelly, who's a firefighter paramedic, and tell us what department you're with. I'm with LA City Fire. All right. Don't get it mixed up with LA County. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> you said that with so much pride. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell us a bit about uh, your department, maybe just a, a general overview. Well, Besides being the best department in the United States <laughs> and the world, um, I work for LA City. I've been on for 21 years, and before that I had um, another fire career. But LA City in particular, we're in a really exciting time because as um, some people may or may not know, we got a female fire chief. It's makes What's me... What's her name? <laughs> Kristen Crowley. You got to know it. If you don't know it, you will. Um, mm -hmm. She's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. She was actually a mentor of mine when I was um, uh, in the academy when I was just starting 21 years ago. And um, she's really had a big impact on my career. I really look up to her as a mentor even. And then to have her being the leader of us as a department is really exciting for me in particular and really all of us. Um, mm. The department is is changing a lot. You know, we're just coming out of post-COVID. So I work in the recruitment section specifically. Um, so, so I'm here. So you get to work with Chief Larson and Rick Nahara. I do, I do. Ah, friends of the Jack. <laughs> yeah, and I, <laughs> and I love to obviously talk about the department. So this is a perfect interview for me. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of exciting things coming out of COVID. Like I was saying, we did a lot. LA City did a lot with COVID. Um, and then as, as we're coming out, we're trying to get all of our programs back up. For sure. And as I mentioned, I work in recruitment, so we have a lot of youth things. We're trying to really reach into the youth and try and get them before... Mm -hmm. um, before they like mess up their futures, you know, before they get credit problems and stuff like that. We're really trying to reach females, get them excited about the fire department before, Younger. you know. Yeah. Younger, absolutely. So they can start building on that career. Right, and so you're here today. I am. This is an excellent tool to be able to accomplish one of those goals. How are things going at your table? So it's awesome. I keep running into um, firefighters that I've met in the past <laughs> from different programs that we've okay. had. Okay. And so it's really awesome. And then um, just, I, I love to be inspirational. I love to inspire or, or use my enthusiasm because I'm pretty enthusiastic. <laughs> I got are. a lot of energy, I got to admit. <laughs> and I love to talk about the department and all the great things that we do but um so it's really it's it's nice to get people when they're just thinking about it or if they've already been thinking about it i can give them a lot of like tips and tricks things that they can do to better their chances mm -hmm. you know because this mm -hmm. is a competitive business mm -hmm. regardless mm -hmm. and i like to talk about my personal experience in getting hired i um i was a brush firefighter okay and i what i really wanted to be on a city department and i applied like to 25 to 35 different departments okay. all over the united states when i was trying now, granted, this was 20 years ago, but, you know, even the hiring process was so much different. We weren't online, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you would have to stand in line overnight, mm -hmm. you know, get the hundred applications and oh, then wow. fill those out. So um, it's really nice that we've streamlined the process. Mm -hmm. And L.A. City in particular, we go out of our way to help everyone prepare we offer interview prep classes. Mm. We give the CPAT for free. You can have a run through. So that's a really good place to start because you can see if you have the physical um, agility to- The if practice you have, version of the CPAT. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. It's just a practice version. Mm -hmm. um, we leave it to you guys to do the testing. <laughs> and so um, that's a really good like measure. And, and you figure out what you need to do to like mm -hmm. get up to par. So it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. It's so excellent that you guys have that Frank Hodgkins training facility oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. to be able to prepare people. That, that's incredible. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, brush fire mm -hmm. um, and that being earlier in your career. Um, for those watching who may not know what that is, what's a what's brush fire? What's a brush fire department? Very good question. So I um, I worked for Cal the state of California. Okay. So you could say it's one of the biggest, right? It's the biggest <laughs> one because you know LA City and LA County always compete, but L uh, Cal Fire is the largest. Um, there's the U.S. Forest Service and then there's Cal Fire. As everybody knows, California has lots of brush fires. So I work for the state. I was actually stationed in San Diego where I was living at the time. Oh, wow. And then if there was a fire anywhere in California, I would get dispatched to it. Okay. So there was 
like one experience where there was one in San Luis Obispo mm. and we were first on scene because there was that many fires in California. Okay. So I did that for five seasons. It's a seasonal job. You're only hired for the fire season. Okay. And then you're actually like essentially let go. And then during the um, interim time between mm. the seasons, mm -hmm. I was applying to other departments and getting like my fire science degree, oh. doing all the things I could to prepare myself to get on the job. Like, <laughs> what everyone here is doing so <laughs> all right well thank you so much yeah. for sharing that i know cal fire really really wanted to be here today oh. uh they will be in livermore next weekend saturday so we're so excited about that but we don't want to steal your thunder no it's we okay. want you to we want to hear them. all things about you and, yeah. and your department specifically so tell us how did you land on fire as a career? Before you became a firefighter, what were some of the jobs maybe you were working? Okay, so I have I have two like kind of weird stories. When I was a little girl, my mom and I were stranded in our car. Oh. And I lived in New Mexico and um and uh a tow truck driver came and saved us. Okay. And so when I was a little girl and you know, we're all sitting like uh sitting like in preschool and whatever mm -hmm. and they'd ask us what we wanted to be all the little girls would be like i want to be a ballerina i want to be a princess and i was like i want to be a tow truck driver <laughs> so i think i i got the bug for saving people mm -hmm. and i got that impact like really really young and then my grandfather was a firefighter oh, actually wow. and he worked for county and okay. uh when I was in elementary school, I lived with them. Okay. And so on my way home from school, I would never want to go home and do chores with my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would go to the fire station and visit him. Yeah. And I never thought of it for myself because of course there was no women. And when I was 15 years old, I met the first female firefighter and I like still like get like, it was so impactful. I remember feeling like it was like meeting Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. which is kind of the joke now. A lot of people give me Wonder Woman stuff, yeah. but I met the first female firefighter and I thought, oh my gosh, girls do this? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And then um, right out of high school, I still didn't want to become a firefighter. I was um, I was a tomboy for sure, played lots of sports, was a, a avid runner. Uh, ran track and cross country, got a, a running scholarship. And then, um, and I was a figure skater, which doesn't make any sense, but it really did help me. That's a I really bet. tough, tough gig. But Very. Um, I, I uh, had some like waitressing jobs, but I essentially got um, interested in the fire department when my ice skating career kind of crumbled, it, I was on a show and it got canceled okay. the week before. Okay. And so I thought, what have I always wanted to be since I was a little girl? I'm like, I'm going to be a firefighter. So I signed up for one class. Yes. And it was a hands-on class. And it started at 7 a.m. And by 7.30, I was like, this is it. I'm <laughs> doing this. I don't care what it takes. I'm doing it. So yeah. I started taking fire science classes okay. and I got hired with Cal Fire like when I was 20. Wow. So, yeah. This is such a colorful background. I know. <laughs> Just like history, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> no, but I think I think it's great because it really, really shows you at home. Um, you don't have to be a firefighter. You don't have to, you know, have that specific fire experience to go into this career and really thrive. And so you you mentioned twenty years on, yeah, twenty years on. Um, and so you can acquire those skills. You can acquire that knowledge. Um, you really have to have the heart, the motivation, mm -hmm. the desire to help people, those kinds of things. Yeah, and, and really anything can, like any experience, I've been asked a lot today, like what can I do to further my chances and mm -hmm. like help me? And I tell them anything, any experience is mm -hmm. great experience. I, I generally tell people when they're interested in the fire department, go take an EMT class mm -hmm. because like I say, if you don't like being an EMT, you will not like being a firefighter. Because the truth is, is 85% of our calls are mm -hmm. medical. Mm -hmm. So if you I you start there, you start building a community. Mm -hmm. If you're in an EMT class, you're surrounding yourself with people with the right. same like mind. Right. And you start sharing information. You start mm -hmm. working out together. You start you know, taking tests together, applying to departments together. And it's, I think it's important to not only build a mentorship, but a community of people with the like mind. Oh, for you know? sure. For sure. Absolutely. So tell us a, a bit about LAFD. Oh. Uh, tell us a bit about the ways that you can expand once you're in the department. I know there are several different specialties, areas you can go into, and you work within the recruitment unit. Yes. So tell us more about that. So, um, 
Gosh, that's that's such a loaded question. There's so many reasons why LAFD in particular is amazing. One of the things that I've I've told people before is LAFD cares about the community of or the Los Angeles citizens so much that like, I don't know if many people know this, but when you dial 911 and you're in Los Angeles city, you actually get a firefighter. All mm. of our dispatchers are firefighters. Mm. And so we care about the citizens of Los Angeles so much that when, from the time your phone call, mm -hmm. you know, from the time that you're having an emergency yep. and it's our, our job to make it, you know, your worst day, you know, fix your worst day into your like decent day. Mm -hmm. Um, we answer the phone. We send our own units because we employ our own ambulance company. Okay. We okay. have EMT and paramedic ambulances, and I can explain about the differences between those. Um, it's basic life support or advanced life support. Okay, so we, okay. we take your call. We decide what you need. Mm -hmm. We send you exactly what you need, whether it be BLS, basic life support, or ALS, paramedic. Mm -hmm. And then we drive you to the hospital. Mm. A lot of other departments, they contract with an ambulance company. Mm -hmm. And so another ambulance company will kind of come and pick you up. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of passing you off not mm. in LA city. Mm. And I just think that's so impactful. And that, that gives me a lot of pride. care, right? Yeah, we, from the minute you take your phone call, mm -hmm. you know, we take your phone call to the second we deliver you to mm -hmm. the hospital, mm -hmm. we are holding you in our hand. And mm -hmm. I just think that that's like, that's a real sense of pride for me. Mm. Um, and as far as what, well, well, so I, I believe you had uh, something to share about outreach to younger groups, maybe girls or things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have I, I said that we help you every step of the way. And you were talking about what you can do once you're on the job. But before you get on the job, we offer interview prep classes and, mm -hmm. and we do all this yep. um outreach. I'm in recruitment and I get the opportunity to run a couple magnet schools. So we have five high schools that right. we offer fire science, our fire, fire classes. We teach EMT. I mean, we teach PE. <laughs> wow. It's okay. It's okay. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of letters. But um, so... And then we have this awesome thing called Girls Camp. Okay. And so we just had it. A lot of the departments are starting this too. We really wanted to try and get more women on the job. And it's difficult. You know, it's hard to talk people into putting 75 pounds of gear on and running upstairs. Like not very many people want to do that. But um, so we just had a girls camp. And I just, I don't know if I love anything more than that. I, I just love watching the girls. They show up. They're so nervous. They're like very like right, shy right, and everything. Right. And then by the end of the weekend, because it's just a Saturday and a Sunday, um, they are so empowered and they're like roaring, mm -hmm. you know. You watch them start the saws and like they're climbing ladders and they're putting on the gear and it's mm -hmm. just so awesome to watch. Right, right. Yeah. And all of this comes with preparation. So no one's just throwing 75 pounds of gear on you without preparation. Here at the CPAC course, you can come Absolutely. out, you can take a practice test, you can come out, you can try on the gear, you can see how it feels, you can run through on a trial basis. We call it a practice test. Um, at the girls camp, that progress learning day one being the introduction to those things and then day two being able to exhibit the skill I mean you guys really just do a phenomenal job of, of so much of that at LA How City. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> well uh, very very briefly years ago um, I did attend a girls camp yeah. uh, in support Caljack does support girls camps throughout the state so if you at home, maybe you're in high school, you're looking to get connected with a program like this, you're looking to learn more about the fire service and get some hands-on experience. Um, I know you guys host girls camps all the time, mm -hmm. um, but I did come down and was, and was in a girls camp group at LA City Fire Department, at yep. LAFD. I was in your group yep. and we ran and we carried ladders and we did lots of other things that were very active and very informational. Um, it's an experience that was a really, really good one for me. I definitely won't forget. Yeah. So it was <laughs> we awesome. definitely thank you so much for being oh, here today. Uh, and just for, yeah, yeah. And for letting us know all the wonderful things about your department. So thank you. Thank you.